Choop. Welcome to Tales Tomorrow. I'm Maru, this is Mary, and we're coming in with some more RPG horror stories. Unfortunately for these RPG horror stories, Mary gotta go. It's like really late for her. It's like midnight for me, but it's like five in the morning for her, so she gotta get going. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm sorry for keeping you that long. I apologize. I'm sleepy. He got me. I'm chained to the floor. I can't <laughs> move. He glued my hoofs to the floor. I, I didn't do a single out. thing. Like, I, I did be. nothing. I didn't do a single thing. And I asked her every single session, every single time we were <laughs> Some stories. Me. If she wants to stick her off along, anyway, everybody wish Mary good night in the comments. Mary, you will get some rest, okay? <laughs> And Mary's gone. But since I had this whole set up, I'm just gonna continue with some RPG horror stories for today. So let's get to the first one for today. Obnoxious Munchkin and the Room of Infinite Wishes. One type of DD horror story that I don't think I hear enough about are Munchkins. They're a thoroughly obnoxious kind of player to have in a game and I think everybody has played with a few of them over their time. Being reminded of a particular amusing one recently, I decided I would share it. Many years ago, the group I regularly played with was approached by the owner of the local game store, and we were told that there would be a kid hanging around who told us to try to show him the ropes of D&D. We agreed, because we were always inclusive and accommodating. At the time, however, it struck to me as kind of odd as to why the game store owner didn't want to include him in his own game. That should have probably told me something. This kid was 9 years old, spoke with an interesting accent, and as it turns out, was the grandson of a woman that was career substitute teacher from my time in high school. I decided to start him off in a game run by me, with other players being my brother and a friend of mine. My friends rolled rogue, my brother played cleric, and I began to help the kid with a character he liked. The kid wanted to be every damn class in the game at the same time. I told him that multiclassing is not normally recommended for beginners, but he wouldn't let the idea go. After trying to help him come up with a way to make it effective, he compromised and he ended up playing a fighter role cleric. He insisted on wanting to have the best equipment and would always be the first one to loot chests and down enemies, sometimes in the middle of combat. Once he got used to the game mechanics, he would use them to every advantage he could, even if it didn't make any sense. He would always try to steal the best items every other party member had, and seemed to think that every area was a dungeon with a monster to kill. He had to be reminded frequently that the half-orc in the room was a shopkeeper, and they were just in town to buy equipment. It's great to have enthusiasm for the game, but this kid I feel like is gonna go a little bit too heavy into being hyper-enthusiastic, to the point where, well, he's not gonna be learning, he's just gonna be going ballistic a little bit. I can forgive kids being bad at role-playing, but this kid had a very limited imagination and was just plain bad at it. So bad, in fact, that it was sometimes side-bustingly hilarious. Possibly the most irritating thing he would do would be adding things to his sheet without DM approval. He wasn't even sneaky about it. He usually just went kind of like this. I cast Fireball! But you're not a mage. Scribbles on his sheet. I am now! I feel like the kid is just a little bit too immature to play something like this. I understand D&D doesn't have to be all serious and everything, but there gotta be a level of taking the mechanics and rules seriously where it makes it fun for everybody instead of just him just writing stuff in just on a whim just because he wants to, just because he thinks he can. It's just, it, clearly he wants to play pretend without necessarily playing D&D. He wants to play a different game. He wants to play like, he wants to do the equivalent of what we did when we were kids where we just ran around with sticks out in the yard or something with our friends and like, play fantasy pretend where we cast fireballs and magic and we were knights and stuff but we just held fun looking sticks and stuff and that's basically it. Grade A for enthusiasm, kind of an F for uh, following the rules and listening to the mechanics, you know? It became fairly clear quite quickly that the reason he was pissed off in my group was because everybody else at the game store thought this was so obnoxious, nobody wanted to play with him. But tragically, and perhaps quite fortunately, he was too myopic and numb to be personally offended by it. So it eventually became my duty to make sure that this kid enjoyed his gaming experience and left everybody else alone. They had basically handed me their problem, so I was stuck with him. At one time, the store owner told me that I really didn't even have to let him back in if he ended up being too much. But honestly, he was just young, and it's a rather cruel thing to never let this kid have the opportunity to try to grow out of it. So he floated around between my games, and we let him come back often because he was generally pretty funny, and even though he only really played one kind of character, with all the power gaming, obnoxious immature behavior, blatant cheating, and his funny accent, he kinda became a meme. A friend from the beginning of the story were running a game, probably the last one the kid ever played in with us, and the way that he normally handed the wish spell was that you could wish for anything, 
but he'll be very picky about the wording and he will usually give you something that you really didn't want. Kind of like if you were to say, I wish for a million bucks, but you were definitely going to get one million male deer. But as it turns out, towards the end of the game, we came into a room, an extra dimensional space where if you ever wish for anything, you end up getting it. He decided for a purpose of this one room, he was going to be less picky. So the kid gets really excited when he figures this out and starts shouting over us everything he wanted his character to wish for. He wanted the best weapons, the best armor, all the gold. He wanted to be every class and be at max level in all of them. He wanted a pet dragon, an ancient dragon. He wanted a castle. He wanted an entire army. He wanted to be powerful and famous. Then one of the other players blurred out this wonderful little gem. I wish you would shut up. I understand why the other players were frustrated. The kid, I think, is just way too immature to take things seriously. Well, it's fine to just be silly and stuff, but there gotta be a certain level where you need to be respectful of other people at the table. You're just shouting over everybody else. I mean, he's a kid, right? He's a kid. He's gonna be mature. That's gonna be, you know, the the baseline, right? If you're a kid, you're gonna be mature. You're gonna project immature behavior. I don't think it's gonna be a great learning experience for him just to be like shut down like that. And well, it looks like maybe some of the other players went at him for a little bit for it. But let's go ahead and finish out the story before I give any more my comments on this. The way my friend ruled on this, the kid's character was permanently affected by this spell of silence, and as such couldn't make any more wishes. Then I decided to add my own touch to this scene. Yeah, and I wish you had to wish for all that crap. You can imagine how that went down. But the kid took it like a champ. At the end of the day, none of us were overpowered or anything. But he was still a fight to rogue mage cleric paladin, and he still couldn't roleplay his way out of a paper bag. I wonder whatever happened to that kid. I wonder if he grew up and got better at roleplaying. And I frequently wonder if he continued the path of always trying to have the character that was best at everything. But no matter what, he is always going to live in my mind forever as the thoroughly obnoxious munchkin of a player. And I will always laugh and as far as the horror stories go, it will always remain a fond memory. There's not really much of a good ending to this, but at least it didn't go on cruel, right? Where they started wishing for horrible things to happen to his character or anything. That's what I was thinking was gonna happen, honestly. And you know, they're just gonna basically bully him out of the way. But if the kid took it like a champ, kid took it like a champ, I hope he improved at some point, or maybe not. Gonna be always like going to a wish room to wish for many wishes and be every class and play overpowered character or something. I don't know. Fascinating story about a kid that wanted to play every class and be overpowered. Interesting munchkin story. We had some munchkin stories, but this is literally an actual munchkin. This is an actual, like, a little kid that's basically just wants to be just overpowered everything. Anyway, let's get to the next story for today. Creepy DM tries to claim Prima Noctus. Prima Nocta is the semi-historical legal right for a monarch to have sex with any female subject, particularly on her wedding night. Well, good thing I looked it up. Now I know what's going to be happening in this story. This happened a few years ago in a D&D 5e game, and the audacity of this DM still bewilders me. We were playing at a game store, and this was technically a paid DM. The relevant players were acquainted to me, as was most of the party, but they were kind of flirty with each other, other than real life, and were playing as a boyfriend, kobold rogue, and girlfriend, Eladrin sorcerer. I played as a drow cleric. DM was into sorcerers playing from the get-go and made up a whole litany of DMPCs to flirt with her to no avail. Most ended up dying on his own monsters after trying to simp for her. At one point, he even told her point blank, I'm gonna roll up a high value male who will sweep you off your feet. I gotta be honest, I'm not really a fan of putting value on like high value male or female. Listen, if you like somebody, you like somebody. Putting trying to try to numberize statistics for who's a high value, who's a low value person to another person. You can't put numbers in that sort of thing. People just get attracted to one another and they start liking each other for other things other than values and numbers and different qualities. Sometimes you just like a person for liking a person. And sometimes you just fall in love for the personality. Sometimes you like the passions. Sometimes you fall in love with how hardworking they are. Sometimes you find appreciation and the kindness and how passionate they are in different things and how much they give to others and how selfless they are. To me, trying to put a, a value in a person is the same thing as somebody trying to look maxing or anything like that. So I would say just don't. Just don't do that. Don't 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 open up your sentences with I'm, tr I'm trying to be a high value whatever for you. If you want to be a high value for somebody, first be a good person, and then afterwards let people realize you value without you having to try so hard for it. Simple as that. She then tried to tell him not to, and reminded him that she told him she was dating Cobalt Rogue. So then DM went to overdraft to try to kill him. 
every monster we encounter would target him. Luckily, the party caught on to this and defended him with our lives. In my case, literally. I even min max my next character to deny DM the kill he wanted so bad. Eventually, DM sort of seemed to give up. Maybe he noticed how obvious it was that he was targeting him, and how pathetic it was, and that killing him would just look desperate at this point. DM then decided that since Sorcerer and Rogue were so happy together, his priest DMPC would marry them in a jungle town of Rothmar. We were supposed to go there and meet the Lord of the Tower for a mission anyway. We kind of thought this was his way of making up his creepy behavior. During the event, we were vigilant on the off chance the DM was pulling a spiteful red wedding type thing. We rolled out perceptions and found nothing. Once the bride and groom said their vows, they kissed each other. The DM then gets a huge grin on his face and says, As you kiss each other, the Lord of Rathmar, Rowan of House Garland, rides up and greets the bride and compliments her on her sexy and ravishing dress. He says that he will enjoy bedding her. She then said, What? I'm not sleeping with him. I literally just got married. Look, why don't we just buy you a hooker as a gift and talk about our next mission tomorrow. Leave us alone for the time being. He then says, Oh no, 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 little lady. It's my right as the lord of these lands to claim you on your wedding night. It's called Prima Noctus. It's actually Prima Nocta. The first night. Then Cobalt's player's face was very visibly enraged and he was staring daggers at the DM. DM then looked at him and said, You can have her once I've used her. Wait your turn, dragon cook. Referring to the kobold. Kobold's player then said, I use sneak attack to freaking kill Lord Robin. The rest of the party joined in as DM swarmed us with guardsmen, assassins, and court wizards that we had no ability to defeat. He also decided on the fly that Lord Rowan was a lich. Basically, he was telling us, Let my DMPC sleep with the bride or you all die right now. Cobalt's players confronted the DM when this became apparent. This guy is so hell-bent on trying to have some fantasy hanky-panky that he's pulling this prim nocta nonsense. If you really need to crank it, take a break for like 10 minutes, go crank it in the bathroom, come back and just like settle down. What is up with these DMs and the weird fetish nonsense? It's constant has to be like some sort of fetish nonsense every time. Crank it in your own free time and find a healthy outlet for that sort of thing. Don't bring that bullshit to the table. I know this is not necessarily a fetish thing, but he's trying to force this hanky-panky fantasy nonsense for what he's forcing an ERP scene for what what is that gonna do for him is that gonna impress the lady no he wants to stroke his DME peen and just be like look at me my DMPC had hanky-panky with your character he said what the hell is this DM then said what not all encounters are balanced as he chuckled Cobalt's player then said you know damn well what I mean DM then just said, It's history. Lords were at the top of the hierarchy, had the right to strew any woman they wanted on a wedding night to bless the marriage. It was seen as an honor back then. Eladrin said, I doubt it was seen that way by the couples involved, especially the woman. And the DM said, Oh, here we go with that lecture. My woman's oppression. Look, this campaign is dark, greedy, and realistic. If you can't handle a mature game of D&D without being preachy and act like a pussy about it, then why don't you just leave him playing Matt Mercer's campaign or something? Honestly, playing with an AI or even a rock as a DM would be a better solution than playing with you, dude. The only reason you're putting in this dark and gritty stuff is because you really want to have fantasy ERP hanky-panky in your game with a player's character. Why? <laughs> If the player doesn't want it, then why are you forcing it? So she did. As did her boyfriend. And the rest of the party. And that's how that campaign ended. We did get our money back for the whole campaign after complaining to the game store. He's still running paid games there though, but we did give him crap reviews so hopefully that warns new players about him. Oh my god, I completely forgot in the beginning of the story they said this was a paid game. This is a paid game. This DM is charging money to run this stupid fucking hanky panky ERP game just to stroke his ego. Fucking clown world dude. I don't even have the words for him. A misogynist DM that has an ego problem that really wants to do ERP hanky panky with a player character just so he could stroke his ego. And it's coming up with a bunch of nonsense to make that happen. I'm glad Mary wasn't here to read this because oh my god she'll probably be fuming as well her and i'll be on a rant together you know i'm gonna just end with this 
back to this DM and I hope he steps on a goddamn Lego. And with that, that's all the stories for today. Thank you guys so much for watching the stories. We hope you enjoyed. We hope you had a blast. If you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe. This has been Tales Tomorrow with Mary, who's very dead right now. Whoa. Leave a message after the beep. She's not dead. She's tired. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Bye. Bye.